go. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, this is the end of January. We are going to be looking at one last step towards learning to draw from imagination because uh, for Force February, we're gonna be giving away prizes every uh, Friday here on this YouTube channel um, based on different challenges that we're gonna be posting on our Instagram accounts. So um, our Instagram accounts, I believe are in the description. Um, it's usually just all of our names. All right, we try, each have our own Instagram accounts. So over there, you'll see the postings. They'll be going up um, tomorrow morning, like early in the morning uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, if you are enjoying this channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell, uh, that will give you notifications. So you don't have to worry about, you know, checking in on when we, um, when we go live, right? So uh, like I said, today's the last step. We're at the end of January. We're gonna try to give and share with all of you some last tricks that we have around drawing from imagination because those are things you'll need um, in order to do the character designs. Um, for the character designs, by the way, I probably should put this in the post too, but it'd be great to have like really a finished piece, uh, meaning all the way to color. We don't normally talk about color and stuff over here, but I'd like to really get some good high quality uh, designs out of you guys. Um, it could be something, in fact, that has come from reference that you've manipulated, right? Like based on the tools that we've taught you, especially I think it was last week or the week before we talked about um, the bridges from reference over to, um, to drawing from imagination, right? There was different cameras. Uh, we did pushing the pose and pushing design. Um, so those are different methods with which you can use reference as an inspiration point versus an obligation point, right? So uh, with all that being said, uh, let's say hello to um, Swenley. How you doing, Swenley? Yeah, ready to draw from imagination. Yeah, good yeah, times. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, how are you, uh, Merton Jay? Been good. Um, yeah. Imagination, really good exercise. You know, it's like mental exercises, you know, a lot of mental yeah. exercise. It's good. Yeah, huh? it's true. Mental workout, right? Very different right. than drawing from the figure. Although, you know, I have to say, I'll put my foot in my mouth with that one. What we all three try to teach you guys actually is when you're drawing from the figure, I'd like you to draw from the figure as if you are drawing from imagination. And that means that, you know, you're still putting in the same amount of work and effort to, um, to understand what you're looking at, right? And there's a lot of schools of thought out there when, you know, you have reference, what you're doing is you're just straight copying, right? And that's not really learning how to draw. That's learning how to see. I think that's good for learning how to see, but not learning how to draw. And there's certain instructors that are only trained to do that in that way, which means when they try to even go to drawing from imagination, right, there's a brick wall. And that's because it's not, it's, it's the act of having trained your eye and your brain so well to look at something, but doesn't mean you actually understand how to draw it, you know? And what I mean by that is, what is the construction of it? What is the force of it? What is the shape and design of that thing, right? And if you can get through those tools, construction, I have to say, being a really big one, like force is great because you bring it over to imagination and it helps you understand systems and you can build figures off of that. Um, construction, God, you just need to know perspective and form to draw from imagination. And then finally, shape design, which I would say is icing on the cake. It just lets you iterate a lot faster and lets you uh, create more appealing uh, looking designs out of your head, you know. So let's get over to Photoshop. I have a bunch of stuff I want to talk about, and then um, we're all going to demo a little bit for you today. Um, so when I'm teaching uh, in mentorship, uh, I go to one of my favorite artists, which you probably all know at this point, uh, which is Mike Mignola. Um, the MG is spelled is pronounced like an NY, so it's Mignola. Um, I usually have students look at his work for uh, shape and understanding that shape could be very graphic and angular versus somebody like uh, Glenn Keane, where the shape design is more traditionally straight to curve to create forceful shape. Uh, but I come back to him again. I come back to him two more times, actually. That's how, to me, how profound his work is. One step is composition. I'm starting to bring him more and more into um, my training of composition with students that want to learn how to compose images and illustration and comic books, right? Storyboards. Um, 
and also over here, right, which is to draw from imagination. Now, those of you that do know who Mike Mignola is, you probably know of him because of um, Hellboy, right? So he was the creator of Hellboy, uh, which ended up becoming into a couple of uh, live action films, right? Um, but Mignola, if you know a little bit more about his past, he, uh, at the beginning of his career, he pretty much just fit in with everybody else as to what was the look and feel of a comic book, you know, um, penciler, right? He didn't really stand out very much. He was good, but it was generic. Like, it looked, looked like everybody else's work, right? You, you would never know it's Mike Mignola, right? Um, and then he, he went through this, um, this sort of passing phase between being a general comic book artist to becoming the creator of Hellboy and the graphicness of that, right? It's almost like a graphic designer that knows how to draw. Um, this limbo land, there's a couple of standout books that happened during this time. Uh, one of them, which is one I want to share with you today, is called Cosmic Odyssey. So this, I believe, was early, I mean, late 80s, early 90s, maybe late 80s. Um, and uh, I just, I love this book and I love Mignola's work in this book. I mean, I love Hellboy as well, but what's interesting here is he's not as graphic yet. It's not as flat, you know, and as angular. There's some tradition of being a, a penciler, a comic book penciler, and it's combined with him starting to bridge his way over toward this, towards this graphicness, right? So for us, it's a great time period to look at. So I actually have students do studies of this work. And they'll go in and you know look at how he's shaping and how he's creating the figures. I don't introduce this, by the way, until a student has gone through force, form, and shape with me. Because what I want them to learn here is look at the simplicity of the shapes he's using to create these figures, right? And it's, his anatomy is very um, efficient. You know, it's not like uh, some other comic book artists where you see like every darn muscle, you know, defined, right? It's just enough. And still people are muscular. You still have Superman and Batman in here and all these superhero characters, right? So what I want to share with you is, you know, look at the shaping, right? Shape is so important. And remember, he's drawing this all out of his head, right? It's not like he has guys posing for him. Some comic book artists do that, but he's drawing from his imagination. And, uh, you know, remember straight to curve shape design we've talked about, like, and inside, outside, inside, outside on legs, right? So here, this leg is an outside thigh, inside in the outside calf. But look at the really clean shaping. You got this nice curve on the outside, that's straight. You got the curve of the knee, the straight of the inside of the knee, the curve on the outside and the straight of the inside, right? And that makes for a really great shape and just a little bit of anatomy, right? He just pulls in the quadricep, the sartorius and edging out the quads got a little of this edge at the end of the knee. I love that, right? Because it really shows you the change in planes. Really, really simple. Even something like the arm, right? Which looks very bumpy. And to somebody who doesn't know anatomy, this could be a little unnerving, right? But the general idea is to understand there's like an arc in here, right? It's like, oh, this arm is really like this. Oh, and this arm is really like this, right? Like just really simple curves and straights to create these shapes, which I think is really profound because in getting an arc in the shape, you always have force. You always keep things moving. And that's what makes his stuff graphic, but alive, right, at the same time. I love how, you know, Batman's whole back is going this way. So we have this curve. Notice here's the shape of the forearm. It's got the curve with the little curve and a straight. It's a good shape, you know. Uh, this gets dangerously close to having a curve on both sides, but it's asymmetrical. You'll notice one is here, the other one's here. So the asymmetry of the peaks is helping it. And then down at the bottom, we got a long curve with the short curve and straight. Again, very similar to the forearm. So Mignola, you know, he's got um, a mental mannequin, which is really what I'm trying to get to here. He's got a mental mannequin in his head of the, like how the human body is drawn, like a generic male and generic female. And he has the ability to know how to keep those poses forceful from any perspective and the construction and the simple version of anatomy for that and do that with good shapes. And that's a challenge, you know, of course, that takes some skill. I just want you to be aware of that is what's going on here, all the way down to the fingers, man, even like the fingers, right? He's got good rhythm going on in these, right? You see that? Really good rhythm all the way down to the fingertips, right? Like he's even understanding it at that scale, you know? Look at that leg. Basically the same leg we just looked at, right? Here's that leg again. It's there, it's there. Same shapes, it's the same view. 
should be the same shapes, right? The guy's got the same anatomy. It's not like his anatomy changed and it's based on human anatomy. So it doesn't matter who you draw. This could be the Hulk and I could take the same leg. All I have to do is make it really wide, right? And put the same shapes in there and say, okay, now it's the Hulk's leg, right? So I just have to play with the proportion of things, but the shape, the rules of those shapes, they're still the same. So then you just learn, like, how do I draw these forms and shapes in different perspectives, but still understand that this is a shape design based on force, right? Which is why force is first and it's always the most important thing. I grabbed these, I like this page because you can really see the silhouettes of Superman, right? You can see straight to curves again in the legs, like really simple, clean shaping, right? I grabbed this image here because look at the body, right? It's actually just a giant straight to curve shape, right? It's like, here's the curve, here's the straight, right? And then it kind of reverses, here's the curve, here's the straight. Right, so this guy, this big specter is kind of like this to make, it, to make it really simple, you see? So even that, he was clever enough to push like the fluidity of that between the body and the head, right? And just a simple silhouette, All right? So this is, like I said, here's a, one more page of his stuff. I just want you to be aware of the power of this, the power of shape, the power of the simplicity of the shape. And then you start to learn how to get the anatomy and stuff on there and bump it out. You know, and Frazetta, like I said, is one of the artists I can grab that is at one of the simpler stages. If you look at any comic book artist, by the way, my, my trick to learning what a comic book artist does and how they build figures is I usually look for the moments where the figures are small because the artist is forced to um, draw the human body at its simplest. So that's when you learn like, oh, okay, this is how this person draws the figure. Here's their mental mannequin, right? Like you can see these Hawkman guys, right? It's like, oh yeah, there's the shape of a leg from Mike Mignola that's bent like that. You're gonna see that all the time throughout his books. Here's the same leg again, we just looked at from the other guy, right? Outside, inside, outside, almost bent at the same degree in the knee also, right? So he's like, yeah, here's how I like this leg from the front view. He's following rhythms, he's following the shape design, right? Look at Superman's leg. Notice the straights, the bottom, the curves, the top, but his curve has a little bit of a peak to it, a little more angular, totally fine. I love the arm here. We could sweep into the shoulder, tricep side of the arm along the bottom of the elbow, right? Good rhythm going on there, good shapes. You can see those straight to curve shapes in the cape as well, right? Yeah, just really nicely drawn, you know? On a side note, I love the way he does Superman because he makes him like huge, like really broad chested. So his S is always like gigantic on his, on his body, you know? So anyway, my note here is Mike Mignola, do studies of Cosmic Odyssey. He also did a book called Doctor, Doctor Strange versus Doctor Doom or Doctor Doom versus Doctor Strange that came out around the same time. So very similar uh, style as this. And then I, I, from what I remember in my life, he kind of disappeared for a little while and all of a sudden like Hellboy came out. Maybe he was doing a book here or there, but I think he went on like a little of a hiatus in a sense with not much work for him to really get, you know, Hellboy completed and get it published, which I think came out with Dark Horse, if I'm not mistaken, when it started. So check out Mike Mignola, check out Cosmic Odyssey. Um, so that's my first note to you guys. Uh, and that, that whole conversation, the reason I'm bringing it up, just to reiterate here, is you want to try to figure out how to start defining your own uh, mental mannequin. Right? Um, so I know I have, in my mind, I've definitely got my own sense of what like a figure looks like, right? And they, it follows the templates, but I got like core shapes down and they're based on rhythms and so on. And that helps me draw from imagination, usually when I'm doodling at night, right? Um, the second thing I want you to be aware of is there's a full range of how you can draw from imagination, even if you have the mental mannequin. Um, I would say at the beginning, uh, I would fall back on my usual note, which is draw more, right? Draw more to learn to learn how to draw, All right? Seems pretty straightforward. So don't sit there and go, you know, let me draw a Superman in a down shot with this whole figure and go in there and say, okay, here's his brow, here's his eyebrow, I'm gonna draw his nose like this, here's his hairline. And it takes years of experience to do this and get all this stuff correct and in perspective, right? To go draw like that. 
and then draw out like the whole rest of his figure. It's like, here's his, here's his shoulder, here's his collarbone. You know, I'm gonna draw this whole thing like this, right? It takes time to get to that place, okay? My suggestion instead would be draw light and loose, right? We've talked about soft touch. So I could take, a, again, a Superman pose, let's say, and go, well, here's like the top of his torso. Let me rough out his body. You know, here's like the shape of his torso. Here's his pelvis. You know, I'm gonna put a leg maybe like over here, right? And I'm just roughing it out, right? This way I have the chance to fix things or change things if I want. It gives me a chance to play with perspective and be maybe a little more courageous about the perspective because, because I'm roughing things out, right? You can see I'm drawing shapes, I'm getting forms in there, right? So this is how I would recommend you go about it at the start, right? Um, now, one thing to keep in mind when you're drawing, and this is kind of tricky because, um, you know, I'm working with line right now, but I am using line to create shapes. And again, I want you to be aware of that. It doesn't maybe look like that because I'm drawing, but I'm drawing shapes. I'm drawing shapes to create the pose, right? And those shapes are based off of force, right? Um, what you want to be aware of when you're drawing uh, these figures is you want to be aware of silhouette. So, you know, if you need to, if you need to, I knock down to 10, 20% and even just tone this stuff in real fast. You know, it's like, well, here's my like general shape of what I was doing. Is everything clear? I know it's clear, of course, because I was doing that in my head went to, to do this um, image, but you could see like his legs are not overlapping one another. His arms are both on either side, right? Like it's really easy to see what he's doing. I could, you know, I could get rid of that, right? And say, well, uh, what if I took this arm, this close arm and I, and I put the arm like in here. Let's darken this up a little. What if I put his hand here? Right, like I'm keeping it in his body, right? So now I fill up the silhouette and I don't see that other arm, right? It's hidden entirely in his figure. I don't know what's going on. Sure, there's the argument of like, yeah, but I could see that his arm is drawn. I'm gonna see the line. Sure, that's true. But it's much better to try to lean towards a place where the pose is really clear in its flatness and its two dimensionality with all the three dimensionality that you've given it through drawing. You wanna more clearly see what's happening, you know? So when you have like a torso like this, you know, and you have the head here, if you need to get the arm across, you want to at least try to see like how the elbow sticks out of the silhouette, right? And see if you can break the other edge with maybe the hand, right? So we, we get the silhouette that looks like this, but I have enough information on one side, enough information on the other side to put the arm together in my mind, right? So there's just enough information sticking out on either side. You also don't want tangents, right? One thing I don't want to do with this arm is go, oh, let me draw his arm and I'm going to put it like right, like right here down the edge of his body. You see, like this, like then I'm like, is it stuck to the side of his body? Is it in front of his body? Is it behind his body? Like, where is it in space? Right? So also not good, right? It's much better. You're actually better to put it in front of him, even if the silhouette's bad than it is to stick it on the side of his body like that. Because even here, the silhouette's not great. It looks like I've extended his torso out, right? Imagine if this was all toned in. Now it looks like he just got a wider torso than what he actually has, right? So that's a double whammy, like stay away from tangents, right? It's such a problem when it comes to drawing and clarifying um, you know, the space of an image, right? So here's like my rough, you know, and sometimes I'll even do this with like a brush pen or something and just draw really light. You do it with pencil, you can work in phases. Ballpoint pen is even good for this. And then um, even with that same supplier, a different one, then you go in and you start cleaning up your, your shapes. And by the way, um, just again, because I'm talking so much to um, mentees about this right now, quite a few are at this stage where they're like, what do I want my stuff to look like, right? What's my style? Um, it doesn't mean that clean doesn't mean, or finished, I should say, doesn't mean it has to be totally cleaned up. You know, there's tons of artists out there in the world who make a living and are very successful with their work and their work is not Disney quality cleanup and like perfect line. There's lots of artists out there that work more roughly, right? 
There's a guy whose artwork I like named Eric uh, Canetti. Uh, the last name is K-N-K-C-E-A-N-E-T-E, -E, Canetti. Uh, Eric Canetti, I think it's R-I-C, Eric Canetti. He's a comic book artist. Uh, he has a very popular Instagram account. He does a lot of marker comps and stuff nowadays, but he's done comics in the past. And I like his comic book work a lot. It's actually cleaned up, but rough, you know? So you'll see, like, I have a habit of doing two lines, you know? So you'll see my work is clean, but like there'll be a double line lots of times from working, right? So, you know, as they used to say in Disney, the idea is to be uh, clear, not clean. You just want to get to a sense of clarity, right? That we could really understand what's going on. And that's fine, by the way, for the character design work too. It doesn't have to be the most clean, perfect line. Some of you love that and I have nothing against that. I, I respect it. It takes a lot of skill to, to get really excellent, you know, one shot cleanup lines or what looks like one shot, right? Kind of like that. Um, but I'm okay if it's not that. You know, I want you to be aware that we're all fine with it not being like the most amazing, perfect uh, cleanup line, right? We're going to look for how creative you guys are and how conceptual you are and how did you do with the contest itself, right? So to end my segment, I want you to be aware of Mignola, right? M-I-G-N-O-L-A and Cosmic Odyssey. Uh, and you're looking at him because you, you want to discover... Um, the kind of mental mannequins that he uses, right? So you got Cosmic Odyssey. Um, when you're drawing from imagination, that is the most important time for you to draw a lot, not a little, right? Meaning scribble around, find the figure, put down whatever you have to. If you need to do a lot of wrapping and go, I just need to build the figure all the way down in space like that, do that, you know, find the forces of that, find the form of that. You do whatever you've got to do to make sure that you understand the language that's going on with you and the drawing, right? To represent your ideas, right? So overdraw, draw a lot. Um, and then last but not least, when you're doing that, be aware of the silhouette, right? Just make sure that you don't, especially for this character design challenge, you want to have really good, clear staging and silhouette. And those sort of hero poses, this main pose that you're going to represent for each character, uh, should represent the character, meaning, you know, I'm not going to have Superman drawn with his shoulders hunched over and his head down, right? Like, unless there's a reason for him to be like that, right? But that's not how we picture him. So, um, you know, have the pose represent the character, okay? Uh, any questions or thoughts from, from you guys? There's a question in the chat, Mike. You want to read it by Ellen? Uh, Alan, is it fair to consider good design for silhouette being a pose with minimal foreshortening and distortion with the clearest community? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, does good silhouette have to be um, minimal and foreshortening? No, I would say not. I would say it doesn't have to be. You know, I could, I could make this hand, you know, much bigger, right? And play this arm is coming out towards me in the silhouette right? And still be fine with it. You know, I think it's totally okay. I think it's more about things hiding other things. You know, you want to try to make sure you can see all the limbs and it gets tricky because you don't want every drawing to just look like everybody's got their arms and legs sticking out, you know, it's it kind of boring as well. So you got to be a little creative about how you, how you pose. And it's fine to cross over the body here and there as I, as I sketched here on the right hand side, but you want to make sure you give us enough of a limb going through something else to clearly read it. You don't want to just lose it, you know? Yeah, Spider-Man's great to draw. I can take some drawing requests. Oh yeah, Matunjay is talking about requests today. So yeah, Matunjay will be up last today. So, you know, if there's something particular you want to see, you can prepare for um, making some requests to Matunjay. Redacted said, so what you're saying is that art doesn't have to be line perfect, that designing characters can be with fun lines. But yes, it can be more sketchy, right? I always bring up like Eric Canetti is a good example, but you know, you could look at, um, you know, Bill Sienkiewicz, who's one of my favorite artists is a much rougher artist. There's all these like famous illustrators like uh, Ronald Searle and Gerald Scarf who were sort of sloppy artists, right? And yet they made their careers with that look and feel. And there's guys in comics that are like, there was a guy named Mark Texera that was in the nineties that was huge, um, who was very sketchy, right? In fact, there was a comic, 
Mm, oh, it was called The Max. All right, there was a comic book called The Max had a lot of really rough line. That's M-A-X-X, if you're interested in looking it up. So Texera is T-X-E-I-R-A. And then, so that's an artist. And then The Max, M-A-X-X was a comic at the time. You know, and, and then I'm not going to spell Sienkiewicz. <laughs> I'm not sure how that actually, I'll take a shot at it. It's like Sien, Kev, it's K-E-V, Kevich. Like V-I-K-Z, something like that, Bill Sienkiewicz. Um, these guys, you know, they built careers on that. And, and I'm sharing this with you because I came from the same thinking, especially since I went through the the Disney military, right, of, being able to draw really clean lines. Um, I had this thing thinking like, oh my God, like a good finished piece of art that's professional has to be clean, right? It's got a perfect line. That's not the case, you know, like figure out how you like to finish. Do you like to complete with that perfect sort of coloring book, clean exacting line? And again, nothing wrong with that. I think it takes a lot of skill to be able to do that. Or is that not your way you know do you hate doing that right be aware it does not have to be like that okay all right so john that, Navarez is also a good example yeah yeah john's a great example john navarez who you know we have an interview with on the channel he's you know he's worked at pretty much every every major animation studio you can think of i've had lunches with john in italy actually ironically even though we lived like an hour away from each other we would go have lunch in florence and and uh you know, and he said, you know, I, he considered himself so fortunate to be paid to literally sit and sketch, right? So you can be that person, you know, because again, most people think, oh, that's not good enough, right? And yet John's getting paid to sit and sketch, right? Come up with ideas. Can he tighten? Yeah, he can tighten down, but that's not really his thing. His superpower is in fast, loose, gestural drawing and sort of gestural compositions. He's very good at cranking stuff out quickly, you know, and and turning over a lot of work in a short period of time, right? So, yeah, thank you, Swenley. That's a great point. Um, all right, I'm going to hand it. Talking about Swenley, let's hand it over to Swenley. Um, I'll take keep tabs on the um, on the chat. Let me give you some some power. Uh, take care of both of you right now, co-host and other co-host. All right, it's all yours, uh, Swenley. Yes, thank you, Martha. That was a great intro. Thank you. So let's see, drawing from imagination. Well, as most of you probably know, I I uh, worked as character designer and I still do, you know, primarily in the game industry. And well, drawing from imagination is a big part of it, you know, because of course, you use reference for inspiration and information like we looked at last week, but you're actually getting paid to generate ideas from your imagination. So I'm going to share with you guys some tips that I use uh, as a working professional. Let's see, let's hide this. So tip number one, I would say do a lot and with emphasis of a lot of quick figure drawings for imagination, especially if you want to be a character designer. You know, I remember one of the most frustrating uh, things for me was uh, when I had to pose characters because that, man, that used to be a struggle. You know, I would spend like hours just trying to make a pose work, you know, and then someday it was like, this is it, I had it. I'm going on a journey, I'm going to figure this thing out because I just got tired, you know, of struggling with that part. And ironically, that led me to force drawing, you know, and all the stuff that we teach you guys is to help you understand how the human body works. And um, when you're studying the figure from reference, what you should be doing is actually extracting information, understanding that you can later apply to your own drawings. You also do a lot of quick drawings, like one minute to five minute poses. I've created the habit of doing quick figure drawings for at least one hour a day during the working week. You know, sometimes if I have the time, I go for two, maybe three hours even. And uh, what that has done is, you know, posing characters and figures has become second nature for me now. You know, so it's not a struggle anymore. I can get the pose down, get it to work and jump straight to the design, you know, which makes you more efficient, you know, as a character designer. 
because you're getting more work done and it looks good. Things work, you know, all the way to when you have to animate it. You know, if you understand the body's rhythms and how the structure is put together, you minimize the, the chance of producing something that doesn't work. So do a lot yeah, of quick drawings. I want to yeah, call out two quick things that you did here. Notice everyone, the two drawings on the left-hand side, Swenley was doing exactly what I was talking about with, he's cutting across the body. Like on the left, we have the, the gun. So the silhouette's still clear. We lose the hand and the body holding the gun, but we see the gun and we see the elbow of that arm and we see it sticking out the other side. So the silhouette holds up. And then the middle one, it's almost exactly what I talked about, right? You got the elbow on one side in the middle and then, you know, you got the hand sticking out the other. So your brain can put together the, you know, the full arm. One last thing to the swimming retention I talked about before we went live today was, um, uh, you know, again, the idea that when you are drawing from the figure, you want to be drawing from the figure as if you are drawing from imagination, right? So keep that in mind. You're not just sitting there and copying, copying, as I said before, you want to, you can tell you want to cross that bridge. I want your imaginative figures to look exactly like your drawings from the reference, right? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. That's a good point. Indeed. So, you know, in terms of the drawing process, I'm whether I'm drawing from reference or from imagination, I'm thinking the same thing. You know, again, the process that we teach you guys about analyzing the figure, thinking about the rhythms and balance relative to gravity, the exact same things uh, you're thinking about when drawing from imagination. So that's tip number one. So I recommend, especially again, if you're a character designer or an animator, storyboard artist, I recommend at least one hour of gesture drawing daily. You know, I've been doing that for the past couple of years. So by this point, I've drawn thousands of figures. So again, makes posing second nature. You know, so you can get it out of the way and focus on the just expressing your ideas and your designs. That's number one. And then once you're faced with drawing from imagination with a blank piece of page, you know, you're sitting there and then the question is, what are you going to draw? You know, so you need, you need a clear idea. You know, especially again, as a, well, when you're working with clients, you're going to receive a briefing, which is the idea that they want you to visualize. But when you're doing it for yourself, you need to start with a clear idea. What do you want to draw? And uh, one, things that, one thing that really helps with that is just writing. You know, it doesn't have to be a whole paragraph. Just some keywords and sentences can help get your imagination started. So let's say, for example, my idea is to draw a man pulling a rope. No. So I'm sitting with a blank piece of page. I didn't know what to draw. I just wrote down something. Okay, I want to draw a man pulling a rope. All right, so this already triggers at least five different images in my mind. You know, so then I can easily start putting them down on the page. So let's do some quick sketches here. So let's see. So the first thing I'm thinking about is a leading edge. You know, so I'm imagining, okay, let's say the figure is is pulling this way, for example. Now, and we have all this applied force building up here. So let me get a bigger brush so we can get faster. Now, so let's say it is the torso. Now, so he's leaning forwards. And now I have this big torso mass. Now I need to make sure that the guy is balanced. Now, so I'm going to put this leg here, the front, right underneath his leaning torso. You know, and this is the leading edge, by the way, meaning that you know the figure is moving this way. So now I have support. You know, let's say that foot is right here. Now I'm drawing it from side view just to you know keep it simple for now. And let's say the other leg. It's like pushing him forward. So this will be the ground plane. Now let's say, so let's think now about how he's going to hold that row. You know, there are multiple, again, multiple ideas that we could play with. Uh, let's say I put this arm right here, for example, and you now here is a fist. I'm thinking about the silhouettes like Mike mentioned earlier. So notice the negative shape, you know, meaning the 
the shape around the, the figure, you know, this all clear. So let's say he's holding the rope, you know, the rope's hanging here and then here is starting to tighten up and here I need a straighter line because the rope would be stretching. You know, maybe it's tied to a, to a heavy object or something like that. No, so I want a bit of contrast. So this is the, the stretch of the, the pull and then it goes over the shoulder. And once we get here, it can be a bit more loose and, and fluid. And then again, I'm thinking about that leading edge. So we have all this applied force, like pushing him forwards. And I'm thinking about the relationship between the back and the neck and head. And I want this fluid connection to happen. Now then I can get the neck in here. Now think about the neck muscle to the pit of the neck and we can add a straight here. Now I can start like adding in you know, some simple structure for the heads. Now again, this comes from having drawn a couple of thousands of, of figures doing different things. Just pulling you know, rope. <laughs> and then we have to think about what it's going to do with the other arm. You know, so it would make it so that maybe, you know, if it's holding a heavy object, maybe we can add that other arm back here and you know, like he's grabbing it here. And again, notice negative shape. You know, I didn't just put that arm out randomly. I had to think what, what makes sense in the action and also what reads clearly, you know, in silhouette. Now, so then now I have a work in pose, so I could easily, you know, continue going in here and refining, you know, adding some of the anatomy, like his leg would be under a lot of stress, you know, so I would show like, uh, like the flexing in his muscles, you know, and so we go forward. You know, and that's, this would be my first idea. You know, I could decide to uh, draw this from a whole different perspective. Because here just, I, you got a question, Swanley, which was, are you considering the anatomy and proportion at this stage of the drawing? Uh, not necessarily the anatomy. Like I started to add that on the leg, but I was thinking purely about the action. And yeah, the proportion is part of it. Of course, I have an idea of, you know, the proportions of a human figure. So I was thinking about the action and the proportions indeed, but not that much of the anatomy. You know, that usually comes later. You know, so yeah, this could be from a whole different position. Maybe, maybe I go crazy with perspective. And here I can start again, like Mike was talking about, you know, drawing what you need here I can establish like a simple perspective grid, for example. You know, let's say we're looking like slightly down at the figure. You now I could say, okay, I want this guy to be in 3D space, you know, so maybe his upper torso is here. Now we have the pelvis here. And then you now he's still like leaning forward. So you could use some wrapping and Let's say the leg is sticking out here. And here we have his foot and this is going away from us in space. You know, one thing I wanna mention that may not be obvious that, that Swanley is doing is uh, he's picked a theme that he's driving with now, right? Which is this idea of pulling a rope. So if you're sitting there looking at a blank piece of paper and you're like, all right, I wanna draw from imagination. I don't know what I wanna draw. I would suggest picking a theme. So his theme right now is a guy pulling a rope, right? Your theme might be um, someone jumping a fence. It could be really simple, right? And go, okay, what are 10 different ways I can come up with 10 different drawings? They could be different moments in time, uh, different ways that the character is standing, different ways that they're jumping over the fence, right? It gives you like a problem to solve. You know, when you have nothing to go after, it's, it's much more difficult, right? It's hard to just look at the blank screen or piece of paper and go, what do I want to draw? You know? Yeah. So sometimes I'll, yeah. Like sometimes I'll do sword fight, you know, it's like, okay, you know, different poses of guys with swords. What does that look like? It might be, I love boxing, not that I like the sport boxing per se, but I like drawing that. Um, I might be watching a movie 
you know, or a TV show that has a certain theme and I'll start drawing characters with that theme, you know, could be a superhero, you know, again, it might be Spider-Man. It's a very specific theme and style of posing compared to um, Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man versus Superman, right? And what, what do those look like? So whatever you're into, whatever you like, right? Pick that theme and that lets you start creating ideas. It could be cooking, right? It, it doesn't have to be something over dramatic either. Uh, but you have to then start thinking in problem solving poses relative to that theme. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like this is something that, you know, I have to remind myself of often because especially when working for myself, because you sit with a blank piece of a paper and you're like, I want to draw. What do I want to draw? You know, and just writing, even if it's one, one keyword, like superhero, for example, that triggers your mind. It gives your mind a focus and a direction. So last but not least, like Mike also started to show uh, use uh, four shapes to design, you know, especially when you want to push into more like stylized uh, characters. This also goes for when you're working realistically, by the way, but I think when you work in stylized, it becomes even more important because the focus is more on the simple shapes, you know, so let's see. So here I'm not writing an idea, but I have something in mind. So let's say we have a character that's maybe you know, aggressively jumping towards us. So you know, I'm thinking about the, the upper body. So this is the curve of the back. This will be the straight. You now, and when, when I'm using four shapes, I use the straight to help me uh, think about angles. You know, so while I'm doing this, I am thinking of the of the rhythms, you know. So I know I want this to be an S curve, you know, from the back into the stomach, but here I get a bit more angular. You know, I'm going around. So when I'm ghosting with my brush like this, I'm I'm imagining like the, the connections. You know, so let's see the father pelvis is here, and I want this guy's thigh to like coming out at us you know so i'm shaping things out a bit more so slightly different way of drawing that what i just did which was more focused on the line there was shape in there but that wasn't my primary focus so this like this and like the crotch area would be around here this is the like, closest pelvis and let's say I want this leg going away from us. You know, and here I start overlapping the shapes to create depth. Now that's one thing, and the other thing is size. So I'm going to make this foot much smaller, you know, compared to the closest one. So that starts creating the illusion of depth because in reality, when objects move farther away from us, they get smaller let's see so let's say like here's a shoulder so i think again about the rhythms like going from the shoulder to the back of the arm it just happens that i'm designing those shapes more as i'm doing so you know using straights and curves And actually, I don't want it to be the exact same angle as the leg. So let's move this a little bit. And let's say it's forearm. Now let's say that like, he has some claws. So again, I'm thinking about the shapes, thinking about the silhouettes. As I'm doing so, I'll get the other shoulder in here. Now, and this can still be relatively quick and loose, depending on you know how far how fast you want to go. And here we we'll have the face. Now, so again, I'm very consciously designing the shapes. I'm just not, I'm not just thinking about the line at this stage.
All right, I'm going to pass it over to Mitunje so he has enough time to draw as well. So yeah, hopefully this tip, these tips helps you guys to draw from imagination. And of course, we look forward to some great character work the coming month. Awesome, thank you, that was great. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep. Stop and share. Great. All right, Mutunje is up. Do I have the power in this account? No. Sorry, you make it. Am I getting muted, I guess? I am. There you go. I was going to say, I only have so much power to go around, you know? <laughs> Want to give me some more? Uh, I'm starting to feel frail. <laughs> All right. Even? All right. Yeah, you should be good now. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, Time for the last part of it. So here I have some tricks, right? Draw from imagination. So I usually have a little bit more aggressive. Um, you can call it style or like the workflow, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, well, you're very welcome to call it like that. Um, I usually doodle a lot, like scribble, 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 scribble. You know, that's how I will, um, because that's what you do in animation, you know, when you're uh, doing like traditional animation, especially I'm not talking about the digital ones, uh, the traditional one, right? And because I am from an animation background, I used to do that. You know? So in, because I, I love uh, Glenn Glenn Todd is, um, he once said, you know, animators are acting uh, actors in pencil, right? So what do you have to do? You have to like act when you're like animating. So basically what do you do? You basically search for it, okay? The word, the, this term I like, you know, you're basically trying to search for something, okay? Which, by the way, you're scribbling around, okay? So my first trick, okay? Keep moving, keep moving your hand. Don't try to like, don't try to like get in those nuances and say, oh, this, this is not really working, you know? Just try to draw, okay? Draw it, if it doesn't work, uh, well, that's uh, a good, you know, you can just go another shot. That's what the thing is, okay? So don't be scared. You can call it uh, confidence, right? Don't be scared to draw it. Even if it feels like, well, it's like running up, but there may be some part in that drawing which you like later, and then you can add that part to your next drawing and next iteration, right? That'll be good as well. So that drawing is like not completely wasted. So go for it, right? Keep doodling around. Second one is see it in your mind's eye, what you're drawing, okay? Uh, so this step should be coming first, right? Don't take it as a series. Don't take it as like one by one, uh, like as a series. What I'm saying is um, these are like random things that I want to say about right today's uh, like draw from imagination. Stream. So seeing in your mind's eye could be the very first thing that you should do, right? You should be knowing like what you're drawing, which means that uh, when you're having reference, you already know, right? Which makes it easier for us. So build your visual library, what I would say, okay? So which means what you can do, look up for references, you know, just like Swendy did and look up for other artists work and then try to come up with something right from there. So first of all, seeing it in your mind's eye, oh, this, uh, this what I'm, whatever I'm about to draw, it should look like this or look like that, look like that, you know? And um, I know it's like very big, tough at the beginning, but it could be very, very easier once you actually have a good understanding of fundamentals, okay? So you will watch that, oh, you know, now I got the force basics done. Now I got the structure, which is the form, right, done. So you'll become like better and better, right, at that. Push those angles, right? <laughs> which means uh, it's a really little bit, uh, you know what I would say, it's try to be like more dynamic. You know, it, this is in that kind of sense. But it's not really important, like, let's say if you're drawing a teapot, right? Or something like, like a still life from imagination. In that, do you wanna focus more on composition? Uh, yeah, it, it is a kind of angles, right? Angles are like all over the composition, but here, what I'm specifically talking about is if you wanna draw like dynamic ones, just like you would see me drawing, you know, in a while right now, you know, <laughs> like the superheroes. So I'll try to like push more angles, you know, so, what I'll be doing is more like this. Right? 
what I'll do is I'll try to like push this, 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 right? Zigzag, you know, zigzag all over. So, which will help me like make those uh, poses more dynamic, okay? Um, now your perspective, right? Which was like talking in the beginning, uh, structure helps a lot, right? Because this is a 2D, we always draw on a 2D surface, we see things in 2D. Uh, on a 2D surface, three-dimensional objects on a 2D surface. So you want to bring that illusion. So no brainer, very straightforward, know your perspective, which will like, drastically improve your uh, visual library, right? Across. And polish your drawing over, which is iterating. Uh, here I wrote polish, but you can go over uh, this in the beginning as well, right? Try to iterate, try to come up with ideas. Don't just go with the whatever is your first drawing, right? Which means iteration is super important, okay? And here are some exercises of what you can do to make this better, which is a rough imagination there. Are there some exercises? Yeah, there are. I only mentioned two of them, but uh, I'm pretty darn sure there's so many <laughs> more of them. Uh, here's two, take a pose, uh, uh, which we are teach, which we usually teach in mentorships as well, you know, on the website as well. To take a pose or an object and try to draw it from different angles from a, from imagination, okay? Which means that, uh, and again, this requires a good understanding of uh, force form shape, so, and even anatomy. So this comes later in the curriculum, but uh, it's a very fun exercise, you know? As I said, it's like a mind workout. And use block art for drawing. Um, now, this might be a cliche for a little bit of you guys, you know, say so like, oh, no, and what I mean by block out is there's so many things, you know, that we're getting resources that we're getting like these days. So for example, there's a website called uh, Pose Maniacs. Uh, I'll write it down here. I just found it, you know, I just found it yesterday. I was like, oh, this will be very good uh, to share in today, uh, today's live stream, posemaniacs.com. Right? So- Is that the one with the 3D models? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And it has like anatomy on the model sometimes, right? Right, skin ribbed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, something like Pose Maniacs where you can like go, you have like three models and they have like different kind of poses and you can rotate them, you know, in your browser as well. So take the pose, draw it from imagination and then rotate the pose to check your drawing, you know, something like that. Maybe you can use another three uh, different 3D programs, you know, like ZBrush or Blender. Blender's free, so I recommend that as well. Basically, Try to learn, you know, from all these uh, things, you know, that we're getting uh, today, you know, artists of the past don't have this kind of luxury, um, but still, you know, they're like legendary people. So uh, try to use, you know, these kind of references. And what do I also mean by block out is, uh, yeah, right there. What do I mean by block out is try to draw, let's say perspective first, you know, so you'll see me, I'll, I'll demo obviously, uh, in a in a minute right now. So you'll see me like draw boxes, you know, sometimes and say, okay, this is the perspective that I want to figure in and just try to draw the box. And yeah, it, it's big, it becomes like very, very easy. Okay. So these are some tricks. I got some requests. I was like writing it down. Like, uh, okay, so I got Spider-Man. I got a soldier. I got a Batman. Okay. All right, let's try to draw it. Okay. Uh, using like those different like techniques. So the first thing that I was sharing is keep moving, right? Keep moving, like keep doodling and try to like search for this uh, thing, you know, try to search for that uh, thing, you know, that is in your mind, okay? So I was, uh, okay, so I'm gonna draw Spider-Man first and going to, because we are talking about Mignola and, you know, this kind of like comic book vibe. So I'll just like go for that, okay? So yeah, because they're drawing from imagination. So I'll just like try to, I scribble around, let's say something like this, right? I'm having a cold, you know, so that's why my voice is like too bassy today. But hope it doesn't like affect your understanding what I'm trying to say today. I have so, no idea what you're saying. <laughs> really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. Got me a break for a bit. Great. <laughs> uh, Everyone draw a picture of Matunje swallowing a frog. That's the contest yeah. for next week. <laughs> the best illustration wins. 
Yeah, see, I, I'm like uh, searching for it, right? It doesn't take me that long. So I'm like very quick, but again, silhouette is not very clear, right? So try to like, try to massage it, right? Try to massage it more and more. So this time what I was thinking is if I can have a more of a perspective, like a base, base for this, like this. I can like try to draw. I try to draw a little bit more slower because now I'm getting the idea what kind of pose is what I like. Okay. So let's see. Just with the knee like coming out. <coughs> right. So I try to like draw this leg. I I'm just like trying to. Uh, this would be the Spider Man's boots. <laughs> right. More for Spider Man. Yeah, no, I'm looking more for Spider Man. Right. So, see what I'm doing. I'm doodling. I'm trying to search for that. Just like the same way, uh, just like the same way you draw the line again and again to search for the function, right? If it's like working or not, or it's like to push a function. So you're just like going over the line again and again and again, you know, something like this. So I'm just, I'm just like trying to search for that pose, which I am, which I want, okay? I'm using shape, right? It's a no brainer. I'm using a lot of shapes, like to figure out the function, right? Something like this. This hand might be like going to the back. So see, that's a lot, little bit of smaller. So I'm see, I'm using those uh, form lines, okay? This is basically, you know, uh, we are sharing some tricks with you, but this is literally all the things coming together, right? Drawing from imagination takes a lot of, um, lot of skill, you know? But you don't have to be, uh, don't have to be intimidated by it. It's like, oh, there's some people who are like, oh, this is really not for me, you know? I don't have enough skill. Well, well, if, if you not do, then skill won't develop, right? So try to do that. Let's just see, I'm doing that. And you're trying to like take the, <coughs> see, something like that, right? So that's, uh, I can give it some Spider-Man eyes for sure. Spider-Man eyes for sure. Like this, right? All right. So that's first. I'm just like keeping it on side. All right, let's try to draw more on different layers. Um, so again, I'm trying to think, right? What kind of perspective do I want? And uh, what is it, what, is, what he's doing, right? Basically, uh, I really like the thought that Mike said today, you know, even if you're drawing the figure, you just want to presume that you're drawing from imagination because uh, you are actually thinking about uh, the past and present, like all those things, like how the model would be moving into that space, right? Um, so let's see. Mm, because I'm drawing Spider-Man and I just like trying to think about the movie. I just pretty much like the movie. So maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe he's like fighting Doc Ock, you know, or something like this, like on the building. Right, so let's do something, whoops, too big. Maybe like looking down, right? Again, function come first. I'm trying to think what he's doing. That's close or over time. So as soon as you're done. Uh, oh, it's done. Oh my God. Finish, just finish him up. Yeah. Maybe he's on the wall, right? He's on the wall, and maybe he's like screaming Mary Jane, you know, while you're falling. So while Matunjay is finishing up, um, I just want to reiterate with you guys, uh, check out Swenley, Matunjay, and my uh, Instagram accounts tomorrow. You will see what the first character design challenge will be. Uh, we want to see that work come in by the latest um, around 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Thursday night because Friday we will be looking at the work before the next YouTube session we have next Live Force Friday where we will pick a winner, a winner 
and we will announce what the first prize is. So um, like I said, check out our Instagram accounts tomorrow and you'll see what the first challenge is. And don't be shy, you know, like submit your work. This is how we're going to learn, you know, do your, do your best. Uh, we're here to try to help you through the process of learning how to do character design with force. Uh, so we're going to take a look. We'll probably bring in like five to 10 different um, submissions and then pick a winner from those submissions, but try to talk our way through those submissions so you guys can learn how to improve your designs. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, that's it for today. Well, we'll see you next Friday then. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Thank you, Mertunje. Um, All right. I'm going to... So I got to doodle out my Superman a little bit more, as you guys can see, I just tightened up shape and all. Um, and like I said, if you're enjoying this uh, channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell if you wanna be notified, especially now with the contest coming up over the next four weeks. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys um, send in for uh, character design, okay? Have a great weekend. Um, have fun once you find out what the first contest is, you know, drawing over the weekend and next week. And we will see you guys next Friday with some of the contestants and our winner for the first challenge. All right. Take care. Have fun. Thanks, Swami Mutunjay, again, as always. Uh, we will see all of you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. See ya.